Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless texas church holds a drag sunday service to bless the sisters of perpetual indulgence drag queens Dallas's Cathedral of Hope gave a blessing to drag queens today. The church, which has a primary outreach to the LGBTQ community, hosted the event in response to Senate Bill 12, which criminalizes performers who put on sexually explicit shows in front of children. Around 40 people protested in front of the church with signs condemning LGBTQ people. Senior Pastor Neil Thomas called this a part of a growing pr persecution of drag queens and transgender people in the U.S. Uh, but SB 12 uh, has quite sincere ramifications specifically aimed at drag community um, who are using this law potentially uh, to discriminate against and to uh, oppress uh, a part of our community that has been a vital part since the movement of the LGBTQ plus community. About to say at my feet. Now supporters say Senate Bill 12 is needed to protect children. After the church service, local drag performers were invited onto the stage for a blessing. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith and false teachers would rise up, as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word, as we read in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy, 4, 3, and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus Christ is the only way, it is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality fornication. If you are having sex and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out as we read in Revelation 3:14 through 22 And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of Scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and isab, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church, and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved, or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And we're going to invite all of those who identify with the drag community to come forward at this time, including our sisters and representations of the community to come, uh, to please be, um, I was about to say at my feet, but I don't mean it that way, uh, but to come in front of the communion table. If you identify with the drag community, please come and join us at the front, one and all. For too long, we have denied the full expression of God's loving diversity. We have silenced the voices of the queer community, denied beauty of drag, and stifled self-expression. Today, we declare that we will no longer stand idly by as oppression and discrimination are allowed to thrive. We recognize that all people are made in the loving image of God, no matter who they are, how they dress and express themselves, or who they love. We celebrate this divine diversity and commit to lifting up the voices of the LGBTQ plus community and creating spaces where everyone can thrive. Drag queens are often targets of hate and violence but we know that they are powerful and resilient people who show us what it means to be truly authentic and expressive. We honor their strength, and we pledge to be allies to the drag community, recognizing the full humanity and their incredible contributions to our world. Claim our power and take up space, challenging those who would seek to silence or invalidate our existence. We embrace radical inclusivity and work to dismantle oppression in all areas of our lives. We invite you to join us in celebration as we offer up our gifts and talents as an expression of love and joy. We are grateful for the diversity of the human family and the beauty that arises when we come together in unity and love. May the divine love that flows through all creation bless and keep you, giving you the strength and courage to be your true selves. May your artistry inspire and delight, and may your performances lift hearts and open minds. May you know that you are loved and valued for who you are. Deuteronomy 22.5 a woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24:11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49-50 Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, 
and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 1728 28-30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1-5 now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15, 18-20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Let's begin this half hour with an increasing threat to Christian and conservative groups as they are facing a new kind of discrimination. Banks are closing their accounts, turning off payment processors, and putting some on a donor blacklist. What's even more troubling is that these actions are carried out under the cover of our federal banking laws. Banking has become weaponized. Christian and conservative groups are labeled high risk and then debanked or denied financial services. Among the victims, Indigenous Advance Ministries, which helps orphans and widows in Africa. Its account closed by Bank of America. Family Council of Arkansas, which works to promote traditional family values, canceled by J.P. Morgan Chase. And the pro-family Ruth Institute. It lost its payment processor after it was targeted by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a hate group. 
the office manager received an email saying, we're not going to do business with you anymore. She went right then and looked at her bank account and it was gone. The credit card processing was gone. And what qualified the Ruth Institute as an alleged hate group? The dream of the Ruth Institute is that every child be welcomed into a loving home with their own mother and father married to each other. Even the National Committee for Religious Freedom, a multi-faith organization headed by former U.S. Senator and Religious Freedom Ambassador Sam Brownback, had its bank account closed by J.P. Morgan Chase. I went in to make a deposit at a branch here in Kansas uh, about three or four weeks after we'd opened up the account, I think, and the teller there said uh, that account's been closed. I go, what? I uh, said, yeah, it's, uh, that account's been closed. Your funds will be being sent to you in a couple of weeks. Banking expert That's Nick Anthony says federal law gives banks a myriad of excuses to cancel groups whose values present what's termed reputational risks. He adds the real culprits may also be federal regulators who can pressure banks to cancel certain groups. Banks are deputized as de facto law enforcement investigators and they face a very real consequence of missing anything. When banks have concerns about money laundering or suspicious source of funds, or they don't like where the funds are going for any reason, they're prohibited from telling customers what the actual reason is. They're prohibited from telling people that they filed these reports to the government and now something has gone awry. That said, Anthony believes the law is also being used as cover to cancel groups banks don't like. Sam Brownback would later learn that J.P. Morgan Chase canceled his group after designating him as a politically exposed person with a customer risk profile, a designation that's only supposed to be applied to foreign nationals, not former U.S. senators. Nevertheless, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon said no apologies are necessary. It's no secret that corporate boardrooms are under pressure from liberal groups to push DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which includes the LBGTQ agenda. The most powerful investment firm in the world, BlackRock, has stated that LGBT diversity is in their DNA. And nearly every major credit card issuer has openly donated money to the LGBTQ cause, a cause most conservative faith groups oppose. The profit motive is not their only motive anymore. The people who are choosing the regulatory process are people who have a vision for family life in America, for uh, human sexuality, and they're using their power to create a world in their own image. Bank of America, which closed Indigenous Advanced Ministries accounts, said religious beliefs are not a factor in any account closing decision, but that it was because of a side business of debt collection services run by the ministry. While we found an instance where a liberal group was debanked, most have been conservative or faith groups. After his experience, Brownback started a website called Chased Away so others like him could share their story. You ought to be able to be a Christian if you want to and use whatever bank you want to and not be excluded based on your values or peacefully practicing your faith. Unfortunately, Anthony expects the debanking trend to continue until Congress finally changes the banking laws to protect people of faith. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. It's been a little more than eight years since David Ermold and David Moore first tried to get a marriage license at the Round County Courthouse. It was July 2015, days after the Supreme Court had decided the same-sex marriage case. They did not want to be, but they became internet famous almost instantly when their YouTube video was uh, went viral. Then Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis refused the license, saying granting it would be a violation of her religious rights, and she refused to issue marriage licenses to all couples. As the situation gained national attention, a judge ordered Davis to grant licenses, and she spent five days in jail after refusing that order. Ultimately, her deputy clerks began issuing licenses. In March 2022, a federal judge ruled Davis violated Ermold and Moore's civil rights. Today, a jury decided the damages. We eventually got our day in court, which was today and earlier this week. 
Um, and that's the award that the jury gave us, $50,000 for each. $100,000 in all. Their attorneys, Joe Buckles and Michael Gartland, expect they'll also be awarded around $200,000 in attorney fees. They just felt vindicated. It felt like today was the day of vindication, and I felt so happy for them. It sends the message, government officials that violate clearly established constitutional rights should be sued and should be held accountable. However, this is not the end of the road. Davis's attorneys with Liberty Council say they plan to appeal. In a statement on their website, they say, quote, Davis is not liable for any damages because she was entitled to a religious accommodation from issuing marriage licenses under her name and authority that conflict with her religious beliefs, end quote. They also said, quote, moreover, the plaintiff suffered no damages because they could have obtained marriage licenses from any nearby clerk's office. The plaintiffs instead created a shame case by intentionally targeting Kim Davis because of her religious beliefs, end quote. In fact, Liberty Council said they intend to see the case go all the way to the Supreme Court, where it seems they hope to challenge the same-sex marriage decision itself. The statement says, quote, This case has the potential to go to the U.S. Supreme Court, where Kim Davis will argue for religious freedom and also argue that Obergefell should be overturned. Three of the five justices in the Obergefell majority are no longer on the court, end quote. For now, Ermold and Moore's attorneys are taking this one courtroom at a time. Then they'll have 30 days to appeal. We'll go to the Sixth Circuit for the last time in this case. They'll petition the Supreme Court, and I pray the court rejects to hear this case. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3, 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Brothers and sisters, Persecution is here. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared, because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and Scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well, as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is here. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10-18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, 
being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.